Members of Nigeria's House of Representatives are set to receive new official cars despite the national hardship experienced by Nigerians. The move by the reps largely criticised around the country has been deemed untimely insensitive to the plight of the common Nigerian and a means to increase the already skyrocketing cost of governance. Nigerians have had to contend with inflation and an increase in the price of petroleum, the country's main source of energy. As the cost of, as the cost of living keeps rising, the standard of living of the common Nigerian has drastically fallen uh, for the leaving the decision of the National Assembly on the, the microscope. Now, joining me uh, tonight for this discussion is Honorable Babajide Obanikoro, a member of the Knight Assembly House of Representatives, and also Alastair Wilcox, a political analyst who joins us live from Lagos, Nigeria. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thank you for joining me tonight at Politics HQ. Thank you, Thanks, Brian. It's my pleasure. Yes. I'd like to start with you, Alesta. Uh, could you provide us with an analysis of the economic backdrop in Nigeria, especially in the light of the recent removal of fuel subsidies, and how this decision to allocate official vehicles to lawmakers is perceived uh, in this context? Well, um, generally, yes, there is uh, economic downturn. It, has, it is not strange. Uh, when there is a policy change of this magnitude, uh, we are we only feeling it now because we are, it was alien to us. Uh, most other parts of the world uh, has not been subsidizing fuel, but we keep doing that, so it's alien to us. So when it came, it came as a big shock, and of course, um, rightly or wrongly, it affected every other standard of living. But the truth of the matter is, I do not understand. I have never been in the National Assembly. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for me to meet um, uh, Mr. Bajide um, uh, Obanikoro, uh, who has been dogged in going to the assembly and managed to get there at the ninth assembly. And I pray that uh, he wins his case and go back for the tenth assembly. Um, so I do not know why there is always this scrutiny about national assembly members. Each time they do anything. I've not holding proof for any of them. I've never worked there. I don't know how I've not had any friend, brother, mm -hmm. or anybody that's been in the National Assembly. But the fact remains that our elected representative must be allowed to govern or to do the job they elected for. And part of what they use to do their job is official cards. And so if that is part of what they use to do their job, then they are entitled to having official cards so long as it can be afforded. Now, the danger, the only snag I have there is the fact that most of these cars are imported. That's the only snag I have. If they are buying this car for me, no sin. It's a worthwhile investment. Look, look, when economy is down, like we have today, the only way out is to spend. And who does the bigger spending? It is the government. So if government spends, then it will trickle down to every facet. There's no way in the world that government comes to share money to citizens, apart from through maybe some welfare program. So if National Assembly members are supposed to have cars to run their services, they are expected to have it so long as there is funds to back it up. But like I said, the snack there is the fact that most of these cars are imported, and it goes to diminish the already bad foreign exchange, foreign exchange situation that we have in the country. That's my only problem. Not that they buy cars, they are entitled to having cars. Mm -hmm. State governors have cars. Um, uh, 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 the private sector, MGs and uh, people, they, have, they buy cars for them to do their work. So our National Assembly members are not different. It is part of what they need to do their work. That they, that they put themselves forward to become members of National Assembly does not preclude them from, have, from having the basic that they need. Do we know what the MDs, the, the, the MDs, the heads of the MDs spend in running courts? We don't. Like it's only national. Like I said, I'm I'm saying this as I don't. I've never known anybody that's in national assembly. I've never had no brother, no friend. I've never been. I, I was only opportunity to be there to be in the national assembly twice in in my, in my lifetime. So I don't know anybody there. But we must put the issues rightly. If these cars are to be bought 
I mean, that we have a plan, for instance, you know, sin is what has supplied this car. It's a worthwhile investment because it will increase the investment capacity. I mean, it, it, it will increase the liquidity of the country. And the so called common man that is thinking that the economy is bad will now have something to, to fall back on. But the only snag is that these cars are imported. Okay. That's Thank, you. Thank you very much, Alessa. You are enriching the foreign countries against your own economy. But that they should not have the tools to work. My brother, I disagree totally with anybody. Thank you very much, uh, Lester, uh, for your uh, contribution. Now, I would like to bring in Honourable Babajide Obanuko, someone that knows the inner walkers of the National Assembly as a member of the Night Assembly, and there's every possibility of him returning uh, to the Tenth Assembly following uh, the court case that ordered the rerun of uh, elections in the uh, Etiosa Federal Constituency. Now. Honourable Obanikoro, thank you very much for joining us on the programme uh, today. The statement issued by the House of Rep mentions that the vehicles are operational and the users tied to oversight functions. Uh, Alastair Wilcox earlier said that, of course, uh, members of the National Assembly are uh, entitled to operational vehicles and uh, that is only grouse is that they're not made in Nigeria vehicles. I mean, you look at a state like um, uh, Abia State, the chief executive officer of that state, Alex Alti, does uh, use uh, an innocent vehicle made in Nigeria product. And people have said, go looking at the present economic realities, buying a vehicle uh, multiplied by 360 members of the National Assembly. At this point, uh, looking at what ordinary Nigerians are going through, are uh, it's insensitive. So, what's your take on this, and uh, why? What what do these vehicles do, and why are they considered essential uh, for lawmakers' duties? You have put it uh, perfectly. These are a set of people that are sent to Abuja to go and work, represent their constituency, and um, some of them are going to Abuja for the first time. So mm. they have to find a way to get around. And the easiest way to get around is to have a vehicle assigned to you. Don't forget, these vehicles belong to the National Assembly. And uh, for the next four years, it's going to belong to the National Assembly. And after the four years, the National Assembly will reevaluate the vehicles. You know, the cars, vehicles depreciate every year. Mm -hmm. So they will reevaluate it and put a cost to it at the end of four years. If the member can afford it, they will give you the option of first refusal to buy it. And if he cannot, they will retrieve the vehicle from him. So it's not like I said, it's a personal property or, or a dash to the member. No, it's a walking tool that the member needs to get around from home to the office, from office to whatever meetings or any engagement that they have committed themselves to or they have to do because it's you know the duty of their um, assignment so oh, it's not a dash and i know that because the number is voluminous 360 everybody thinks that oh wow 360 members if you divide it by state you will see that uh, legal states for example we have 24 so those are that's 24 cars being bought for members representing legal state a state like Bayel bielsa they have just six so that's mm -hmm. just six vehicles going to bielsa as they say so if you break it down like that, you will see that uh, it's actually not as bad as it seems when you, you know, put it in a lump sum and say National Assembly wants to procure the um, 60 vehicles. It's operational vehicles that are not private vehicles that are at the end of four years, you have the first right of option to say, yes, I want to buy this vehicle or no, I want to return it to the National Assembly. So it's not uh, like that. And during the four course of the four years, some amount of money will be deducted from your salary. Mm -hmm. towards that same vehicle that you're talking about. And it's not like I said, it's National Assembly that is maintaining the vehicle. The maintenance is on you as a person. So uh, it's not as bad as it seems or as we try to um, um, portray it. Mm -hmm. And I understand the hardship in the economy. We're all feeling the hardship, but work has to be done. And that's the reality of, of I, where we are. We have I, to face absolutely. Reality. Uh, Honourable Obaniko, and no one is saying that, uh, you know, senators and members of the House of Representatives are not entitled to these vehicles. I believe uh, the uh, bone of contention is the vehicles. 
uh, if you go to different companies, they have official cars. And I know, uh, like you said, uh, these people left their jobs to come to Abuja. But uh, looking at the present economic realities, why go for the high-end uh, vehicles? It could be a middle ground. Uh, these vehicles, according to uh, research, uh, one of them cost up to 100 million naira. That money could be uh, diverted into uh, other ventures. Is there uh, any way? Well, why does it have to be those high-end SUVs? Uh, at the point of um, decision making, I was not there, so I can't say this is why the SUV, SUVs were decided on. But like I said, it also has to do with durability. It also has to do with comfort because you know, sometimes you drive from Abuja to uh, 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 other areas of the country and you might want to want comfort and maybe also they put into consideration some areas of our road also they put in consideration security because these SUVs get away easier than your normal um, uh, vehicles so I wasn't there at the point of decision mm -hmm. but I know that uh, they decided on the Prado um, SUV and like I said there's a payback term that the hundred uh, the uh, amount being purchased for is not totally shouldered by national assembly there's a payback plan where they deduct from your salary every month a certain amount that is being applied towards the payback of these um, vehicles and like i said in four years after four years they revalue the vehicle and tell you okay this is how much the vehicle is worth at this time uh, uh, of the uh, of its vehicle's lifespan can you afford it Yes, then you pay national assembly. Okay. If you can't, then you return it. Thank you, Honorable Banikoro. Uh, now, back you. to you, uh, Alester. The statement issued by the National Assembly at the House of Representatives, I beg your pardon, indicates that these vehicles, uh, like uh, Honorable Banikoro just uh, confirmed, will be the property of the National Assembly during the 10th Assembly's tenure. How does this arrangement impact? the accountability and responsibility of lawmakers in managing these assets and what are the implications for taxpayers well um uh, well uh, on, on a general note i know that uh, our democracy is very expensive uh, considering our size and economy it's very expensive uh, we have 360 members uh, in the house uh, we have 109 senators in the other house having a total of uh, 369, um, it's, a, it's, it, it, it's a humongous cost because most of the me most, most, most members have never moved one motion before or even supported any. A lot of them are just sitting down there. With respect to uh, Honorable Banikoro, we all see this on national television and all whatnot. Even the oversight functions that they do, sometimes it is fraud with suspicion, with fraud, with uh, uh, corruption and all whatnot. So, uh, uh, because of that, Nigerians do not see value in our National Assembly, which is, the, which is for me, is the unfortunate aspect of our democracy. It looks expensive, but if you compare ours, a country of 200 million to, you, to, the, to the UK, a country of about 70 million that has 653, I mean, 658 members of their own uh, assembly, then you know that what we are doing is a child's play here in Nigeria. But when you compare it in terms of our uh, socioeconomic situations, you say it is large because most members are just there are warming the bench by getting the same thing that every person does. Now, without holding the financial assembly, they didn't pay me to hold it for them, and I'm only saying this out of my own pure conscience and advice to Nigerians. It is high time we begin to have some respect for the National Assembly. Sincerely, I have watched the budget of National Assembly from 1999 till date. It's not necessarily assembly that has their budget around 120, 130 billion per year. And sometimes people think that money is only for the legislators. Mm -hmm. No, that money is for the National Assembly, is both legislators and the management. Now, I'm sure the National Assembly has over 10,000 uh, 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 career civil servant workers. Mm -hmm. They are part of that money. The National Assembly has an institute, the Legislative Training Institute, it's part of that money. So it, they, are, they have one of the lowest budgets. But because they seem not to have lost faith with the country in terms of what they do, but nobody talks about the demands that comes on them. They are not the supposed job. to provide you lights or provide your child's cookies. 
But uh, most of them that know, I'm sure, I'm sure, if I remember, they could, will, will, will attest to this. A lot of people come to his house early in the morning and tell them that their wife just gave back and all that, students who have not been paid. So we put a lot of pressure on them, but we do not have respect for them. In terms of accountability, for me, it is not tidy. That arena is not tidy. And the question you asked, Honorable Barikuro, I'm mostly in support of that question. We could have gone to something lower. Yes, his reasons are very valid, but something lower and something that, uh, that does not go out of the roof. For instance, when you attend somebody, you spend about 140 million naira to purchase a vehicle. We know the corruption embedded in that. We know the kind of uh, uh, backhand and all that. We know what government contracts are all about. These are some of the things that uh, the society France are, that society are, are, are very, very worried about. But that they need operational tools. That is given. Nobody should come and tell me otherwise that somebody is hungry. If you are hungry, fend for yourself. The government is not the one that feeds people. If you are hungry, mm. try and fend for yourself. I'm fending for myself. I cannot wait for uh, Obanikoro. I cannot wait at his door every day to say I'm not eating every But what, what about the insensitivity? I mean, you have to be sensitive to other uh, conditions. No, 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 no I have said that. I've said that. In terms of the cost, I've said that in terms of the cost, in terms of the kind of vehicle they are buying, in terms okay. of the PD and the process, I think there's a lot of corruption embedded in it. That understandably, and so that should be that should be separated from the fact that do they need working tools? Yes, they need working tools. Should their budget be increased to meet their needs? Yes, that's why I see that most times they depend on MDAs that they are supposed to be supervising to pay their, the, the cost of oversight functions, to pay their transport, to pay this, to give them money. So it inhibits their work. But if there is an opportunity provision for them to do their work, some of these things will be checked and the country will be better off. Okay, so thank, you, thank you, Alester. Thank you, Alester. I'd like to bring back uh, Honorable Obanikoro uh, into the conversation. Thank you. Now, Honorable Obanikoro, the need for off road vehicles to reach remote areas uh, is emphasized or cannot be overemphasized. How critical are these vehicles for lawmakers' ability to effectively represent their constituents? And let's talk about your experience in the Ninth Assembly. You represent a federal constituency that has uh, some remote communities. It's your local government. There are times that you have to take uh, boats and, uh, uh, to, uh, and canoes to these uh, remote communities to carry out your uh, legislative duties. Are there arrangements uh, by the National Assembly Authority uh, to cover the cost of that, because even these SUVs, uh, they can't, they can't run on they can't water. They can't run on water. So, can you share uh, your experience with us and how important uh, these tools of work are to your job? I must uh, commend uh, Mr. Alexa. Uh, he seems to understand uh, the operations and dealings of the National Assembly too well. And um, he's speaking from a point of knowledge, and I wish a lot of Nigerians will also take their time to understand the process, and they will see that it's not as uh, uh, as, as uh, lucrative as mm. it seems. And like you rightly said, uh, there are some remote areas in my area where I have to go by boat, that's why they have to go to Kogoro, all the way down to Tomoro. Those are river right areas that you can only uh, access by um, boat. And the truth of the matter is that there's a running cost that you get at the end of every month from National Assembly. And it is expected that you will do all this from your running cost. My flight to Abuja and back to Lagos every other time, I also take that out of the running cost. It's part of the running cost um, of, the, uh, of the office. So those are the little things that you do uh, with the office running cost alongside paying salary of uh, your aid that are not being uh, paid by the National mm -hmm. Assembly, because National Assembly gives you just five uh, aids to take care of. And at the end of the day, you see that you need more than five aids if you really want to serve your people in the true sense uh, of it. You need more than five aids. So you see that I'm paying more than five aids to make sure that I reach out to every nook and cranny of um, Etiosa. So the, the running cost is what you use to try and uh, make sure that uh, you get to the yearnings of your uh, constituency. And like, and like Mr. Alexa has said, it, it's the, 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 sometimes it, it's the, the, the demand and expectation outweighs you know, what you receive 
from the National Assembly. You just so, have to make sure. Honorable Banikuru, how do you, and I'm sure you get this a lot. I mean, you're, uh, you're very much a part of society. You attend social engagements. You're in tune with your constituents and you move around uh, a lot. When people say these sort of things, uh, it's because there seems to be a trust deficit between the government and the government. And that's why you said, you know, it's not as lucrative as you people think. There's a lot of uh, work that has to be done. We're not here to enrich ourselves. How do you communicate uh, to the ordinary people and what needs to be done to have a better appreciation and understanding of the workings of the National Assembly? And where does this yes. uh, perception come from that, you know, you... You, you're very rich, and uh, as long as you're a member of the National Assembly, uh, you've hit the jackpot. No, it's not. It's not. Um, it's, it's a mentality that we all have to work together to try and readdress that. Because it's not just National Assembly. It is assumed that once you're in government, you've hit the jackpot, and uh, everybody seems to forget the exigencies and the responsibility that are tied to the office, and they just assume that, oh, he's a made man. No, it's, a, it's far from it. It's an assignment that has been assigned to me by the good people of wherever it is that you are representing. And if you are allowed to do your job, and everybody's not thinking that, oh, he has made it in life, we will function a lot more in Nigeria. But because, for some reason, it's a, you know, like I said, we have to do a lot of education. Uh, we know how to continue. It's a continuous education process where we are educating our people to let them know that look, being in government does not mean that uh, I'm a successful man or that I'm a billionaire or that I'm rich. It only means that you have given me an assignment to do, and I have. To, it has to be done. So that um, education we have is an ongoing thing that we have to continuously educate people, and it, it, it's deep into the system. And uh, some of us are trying to, in our own little way, to try and repair that uh, uh, mentality, to let people know that, no, that is not how it is. And we need people like uh, Mr. Alexa to also help us to reach out to people, let them know that being in government is not... Uh, uh, I've seen people that have been in government before, and today it's the grace of God, you know. So being there, yeah. and, and we have to always put that into um, consideration. So it's, 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 it's a lot of work. You yourself, Gwinga, you have to also help us teach our people. And it's also the task of the media as well, because sometimes it's the media that portrays this uh, uh, image that shows people in this light. So what media also feeds people goes a long way than what anybody feeds people. So it's, it's a collective effort that we all have to come together. to. Let, if I'm in my office and I'm not getting, like Mr. Alexa said, I'm not having to pay numerous hospital bills. I'm not having to pay... Uh, school fees that are not mine. I'm not having to do all these expenses that are being put on me simply because I'm in office. I am sure that in my own time, with the resources available, we can do a lot more mm. for the general populace. But unfortunately, because, uh, you know, and for people like me that I'm a grassroots, I'm always the grassroots, I can't help it. I wake up in the morning, I'm getting all, all sorts of text messages, all sorts of calls, all requesting for financial assistance even before you go to bed at night but and and if that goes to every even the local government chairman even the council of the ward the house of assembly mm -hmm. everybody we all get all these calls and so you're being forced you know to yeah. make sure that uh, yeah. you don't you uh, as a mentality as well you want to make sure that you are there for your people so that they don't go out there and start complaining about you so you're trying to please almost everybody which you yourself know that it's practically mm, impossible, it's... <laughs> but you still find out that you have to do it just because it's a, it's a norm now that is socially accepted that as a rep member, every time they want to wipe their bomb and they come to you, you have to wipe it. That's just mm. <laughs> first thing. <laughs> Uh, quite a uh, demanding, a demanding task and uh, job, if you ask me. Uh, now, back to you, Lester, as we begin to wind down on this conversation. How does this allocation of vehicles to members of the National Assembly fit into the broader discussion on the cost of governance in Nigeria? What measures uh, should be taken to reduce the cost of governance in the country? And how does this decision to buy this I end 
uh, sports utility vehicles align with those efforts? Well, um, thank you. Let me tell you, I've been doing this job, honestly, and uh, of course, nobody even know me. Uh, I do it in my corner. I do it. I am always a popular face on TV, radio, and I speak for Nigeria. Since then, I'm not speaking for you as Honorable Banikuro. Like I've said, I don't know. I've never had a brother friend in National Assembly, but each time this negative perception comes, it hurts me as a Nigerian. It hurts me as a Nigerian uh, because I know that lies, perception, negative perception is what rule our society, and no society can make any progress with such negative perceptions. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chartered accountant. Sometimes in my forum, in, my, in, in our forum, I fight my colleagues. I said, you can't be thinking like this. When a budget of 150 billion comes, you divide among 369, and then say, this is what we used to maintain our legislature. You forgot that there are over 10,000 uh, bureaucrats in the National Assembly and all that. So that's for me, I do it. So maybe you can hire me to do it on a higher scale, and then you pay that cost. Now I do it free. So when you hire me on a higher scale, I will be ready to work, even for National Assembly, and pay. So I'm praying for you to go back. They can hire me to do it better on national scale. But I do it consciously. Nobody pays me. I don't know anybody. It is from my heart, as with the love I have for Nigeria and the love I have for my, for my institutions. Now, talking about cost of governance, we all need to work around it. Sincerely, apart from what uh, Honorable Benedict have said, uh, the MDAs are the main problem. The MDAs the, the accountability at that level is very, very low. Now, we are talking about the National Assembly. You know, if they appoint an MD now, or a DG, one of the MDAs, he will have like two official cars, driver, and all what not, gamut of other things. But we don't look at that. So the cost of governance is total. As far as I'm concerned, our National Assembly is the cheapest in terms of uh, uh, governance structure. Because I think it's just this last budget that they got 200 billion. I can't remember. Maybe Obanekro will correct me. They've always been on 120, 150 billion. Meanwhile, even the judiciary has far more than that. Our education budget, it, budget for education alone in Nigeria is far more than that. As for defense, the defense is in one is, is in trillion. And a whole arm of government, a whole arm, which is which is the legislature, is having uh, uh, less than in fact say 200 billion. I mean, for me, look at what is it, what, what is that compared to the size? So, but it's not to say that everybody should not make sacrifices. No, everybody should make sacrifices. If you need to use, like before, like I remember in the, in the Second Republic, they were using uh, Peugeot, uh, 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 Peugeot made in uh, Pan, by yes. in Canada. So we've gone past that level. So, Honorable uh, Banekuro, when you go back, which I preach, you go back, talk to your colleagues. If possible, let us patronize innocence. Let us encourage domestic assembly of cars. You have made the sacrifices. Let's keep making the sacrifices. And please tell your colleagues they should stop embarrassing national assembly when they go for oversight functions and start collecting bribes from MDAs and start having, I mean, and start having scandals. We would, we, I mean, we, we know the Arumote and the and the, this man from Benue, the, the the scandal. We know the off your mic scandal. So there's a lot of scandal among. Them. That is where the trust deficit comes from. He who goes to Caesar must go. With a clean hands. Thank you very much, Lester. See, and uh, by Honorable Obanikoro. For us, for yes. us to keep defending you, you you've never, I've never collected a call from it. I don't even know anybody apart from you and I'm saying. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, thank you, uh, Lester. Well, we have to wrap up this conversation shortly. Uh, now, Honorable Obanikoro, as we wind up, uh, let's talk about uh, your upcoming elections. The courts did overturn. Uh, the results of the elections that uh, uh, puts the Labour Party candidate as the representative of Etiosa federal constituency. Uh, how are preparations uh, for the elections and how confident are you in returning uh, to the National Assembly as the representative of Etiosa federal constituency? Looking at the uh, quality and the level of opposition uh, presented by the People's Democratic Party and also the Labour Party in your constituency? Well, um, as we speak now, we are within a, a, a paperwork stages of the appeal because the Labour Party and uh, its candidate have appealed the decision of the appeal uh, of the tribunal mm -hmm. court. So I believe in another three, four weeks, we'll still be in appeal court. But uh, be as it may, 
I am so, I'm solidly confident that uh, the appeal court would also say that uh, supplementary elections should be done because indeed elections did not hold at the particular polling units that we are um, talking about. And the votes there is about 32,000 votes, which is uh, about five, six times uh, the margin of lead. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, this time around, I believe it's a local election. And if you come to Etiosa, I want to believe I am uh, arguably the most popular amongst uh, the candidates that are, uh, are all for uh, selection. And when I say Hello, Honourable Banakuru, are you there? We seem to have lost audio connection with you, but I would like to say a big thank you to you, uh, Babajide Obanikuru. Okay, go, go ahead, please. We have your connection back. Okay, I think I'm, I'm the one closest to the grassroots, I'm the one closest uh, to the people, and I'm the one that is seen more physically, not on TV, not on the uh, internet or social media, but physically that they actually do see and have access to. I think I'll be my humble self. And it's going to be a local election. The last election, we had external affairs, the influence of uh, the presidential candidate of UB, the issue of the Muslim Muslim ticket, uh, and so many other factors that influenced uh, decisions on that day and emotions played up from you know some of the government policies that were not um, mm -hmm. favorable to our constituency, of which I was the only one on National Assembly that uh, vehemently kicked against. Uh, um, uh, sadly, but um, like I said, it's going to be a local election, and I believe that uh, being a local boy, it's going to be uh, a turnaround election, and we're, we're yeah. able to we we'll surmount and surpass the deficit on ground. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Babajide of Banikuru Knight Assembly House of Representatives member, and Alastair Wilcox, political analyst. It was a pleasure having you both, uh, gentlemen, with me tonight in Politics HQ. Yeah. Thanks for your contribution. It's my pleasure. Babaji, let me let me wish you well and hope that uh, thank you, sir. you invite me to come and be at Carol. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll definitely reach out, sir. You're watching Politics HQ and New Central Television. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, uh, we'll look at a breaking news development uh, where Court of Appeal in Abuja has void the, the election of Senator Elisha Abo. Uh, the senator representing Adawa North District and declared the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Amos Johanna, as the winner of the election. We'll get into details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us.